What's up everybody? Welcome back. As always, appreciate you tuning in for day four of Whisker Week. Uh, for those of you guys that haven't seen the past three days, we've been posting a Whisker Fish video every day this week. If you haven't seen those, head back and check them out. Uh, today's video, a bunch of y'all have been asking for a rundown as far as rods, reels, uh, and the actual rig that I use, which is what we're obviously going to cover today. If you haven't already, please hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, hit the bell notification, you'll see when we post. Let's jump right into it. To get started, we're going to start by talking rods and reels. Uh, I've spent quite a bit of time and quite a bit of money searching for the right sticks and the right reels. It does get expensive. Uh, by no means am I trying to run anybody's product down or trash anybody's product, but we are going to talk about some of the stuff that does work and doesn't work. Uh, so getting started, we're going to talk about the rods here. Um, I do have a couple different rods that run in the boat. However, I have moved almost exclusively to these Mad Cat sticks right here. This one's in a heavy. Um, you don't need anything crazy for these rods. You don't have to spend a ton of money. Um, rods is actually one of those places you can save yourself some cash. But there are a couple important things that you need to look for. Every rod that you buy, no matter what you're fishing for, whether it's bass, steelhead, flatheads, anything, every rod has a line rating on it. Uh, so as you guys can see, this rod here is rated 30 to 80 pounds. This next rod I'm about to show you is rated 65 to 100 pounds. And I'm going to show you guys and explain what that rating means and why this is so important. So when you're looking for catfish sticks, you want a soft tip and you want a ton of backbone. You need something that's going to be soft enough to set a circle hook uh, without pulling it out of the fish's mouth. Uh, but as many of you Midwest whisker fishermen know, we fish pretty far in some junk. Uh, we're ripping stuff out of log jams and trees and really heavy structure, uh, so hence the big backbone. If you look at these rods on the ground, this rod has a really big range on it, 30 to 80 pounds, and you can tell just by that thing being on the ground how soft and limber that tip is. Uh, when you load this rod up and you get down into the backbone, it's just about a pool cue. So that's going to allow you to set your circle hook, get a good hook set, but as you load that rod up, you're going to have plenty of backbone to rip that fish out of the cover and get them up off the bottom. Here we have a 65 to 100 pound rod. Yes, it is a little bit heavier on the rating, but it also has a smaller range. If you look at this rod, the tip's very, it's not very limber up top. It does move a little bit, but not a ton. I do catch plenty of fish on this rod. It's not horrible, but it's not ideal. When you load this rod up, you see it does take longer and it is harder to get that thing to fold over. So we have found that we do pull some hooks on circle hooks fishing with this rod. When it comes to budgeting and trying to save yourself from money, uh, rods is one of the places you can actually do that. This rod was, I believe, 50 or $60. It is a Shimano Sojourn. I have two of these rods. I have one in, this is a heavy action, and I have one in a medium heavy action. These rods have performed excellently. I've caught plenty of fish on them. Affordable, cheap, gets the job done. As I mentioned before, these are the Mad Cat rods. Uh, these things are built to last, and they are absolute tanks of a rod. Uh, Yes, they look cool, they look good, they perform outstanding. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, these will be around the boat eventually. This can also double as a sturgeon stick in the heavy action. Um, I have a medium heavy as well, which I believe is rated 20 to 60 pounds. Uh, this one's 30 to 80. can also be used as sturgeon depending on where you're fishing. Uh, if you're exclusively going to be fishing for flatheads, I would recommend having a combination of both of these rods around your boat. I have a ton of backbone medium, even in the medium heavy all around solid rods. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is reels. Guys, reels is somewhere where you don't wanna go cheap and you really, it, you're gonna lose money by trying to take the short, easy route. Uh, I spent a bunch of money this summer cycling through reels and the fact of the matter is flathead fishing, absolutely, it just fuses your gear. Uh, you're locking down your drags, you're fishing stuff in heavy current, so you're even testing your spool tensioner. Uh, I think I've gone through four or five different brands of reels. Uh, I'll start with this one right here. This is a Catfish Pro Tournament Series. Uh, coming right out of the box, you can tell this reel was a little rough. 
uh, which you could get used to and would be okay if it performed well. However, I've been running this reel for probably four months or so, uh, and I've already smoked it. The drag has gone out, the gears have gone out, uh, and it's almost cost us a couple fish. To give you guys perspective, I paid, I believe, 70 or $80 for this reel. Uh, and to be perfectly honest with you, it's just not worth the money. When you're flathead fishing, I do prefer round reels. They're a little easier to work with. However, some people nowadays are going to these low profile reels. Uh, one of the things I didn't touch on is the drag that you're gonna wanna get out of these things. Uh, so with the round reels, if you can get between 15 pounds to 20 pounds of drag, is gonna be plenty. Um, this little guy right here, believe it or not, will put out 24 pounds of drag. It has standed the test of time so far. It's a powerful reel. It does work well. Uh, it doesn't have the power handles, which you could upgrade if you wanted to. But if you're into the low profile thing and you want to stay away from round reels, this is a Lou's Super Duty GX. Pretty solid reel. Double is a musky reel too, if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, gets the job done. My favorite and newest addition to the boat and the whisker fish spread lately has been this pen squall this is a 15 uh, this is a savage of a reel it's got the big power handle that you're looking for has an awesome clicker on it super loud and strong it's incredibly smooth it casts really well uh, it brings in even those big baits and those big fish it performs extremely well it's built like a tank uh, people fish everything from stripers to sturgeon flatheads, uh, you name it, this reel can do just about anything that you want it to. As I mentioned, don't try to save money on your reels. It's going to bite you in the ass in the long run. Uh, if you're looking for something that's just a definite go-to, Pen Squall 15 or a size 20 is going to get the job done. Let's dive into the rig. So guys, just like any other sort of fishing, everybody does things a little differently. Uh, this is most certainly not the only way to do it, and I'm not even gonna guarantee you that this is the best way to do it. Uh, this is what I've been running this year. It's worked extremely well for me. So talking line, uh, I like to run between 65 up to 80 pound braid. Uh, 65 does most certainly get the job done. The reason you do run so heavy, uh, as I mentioned before, you're fishing a lot of logs, you're fishing a lot of heavy structure braid in itself isn't known to be extremely abrasion resistant so I do go as heavy as I can to dive into this rig for you I'm gonna start at a three-way swivel tie that to my main line off the bottom of that three-way swivel these leader lengths will vary what this is going to determine guys is how far off of bottom that your bait is going to sit At the bottom of this three-way swivel is going to be where your lead goes, so that's where you're going to hook up your sinker. So what will happen here is as you pull that rod tight, your sinker is going to go tight. Off the other side of your three-way swivel, you run another leader line. Now, you want your leader line with the hook attached to it to be shorter than your leader line or at least an equivalent length to the leader you have on the bottom. This will prevent your bait from being able to rest, so as this comes down, uh, if you if you have too long of a leader, your bait can sit on bottom and he's not going to be busy down there. You want that thing darting around. Uh, as we always joke when we run bullheads, it's like a dog on a chain. Guys, similar to rods and reels, I've spent a ton of time searching for the perfect hook. Believe it or not, it does exist. Uh, I've been everywhere around from your regular Gamagatsu hooks that you can just buy at the regular store. Um, I fish some Whisker Seeker hooks. They do have a triple theft that I enjoy as well. Uh, Skinner behind the camera there actually prefers the triple threat. I've started running Hooker's Terminal Tackle. That's what's called the Backstabber Hook. It's an offset circle hook. No matter what hook you decide to use, do yourself a favor, make sure it's offset. Uh, I'll run anywhere from a 10 knot to a 12 knot. These things have been on the money since I've started using them. Uh, matter of fact, in some of our past videos, you can actually see these things in work. Have your main line your 65 pounder your 80 pound braid attached to a three-way swivel 
you have a leader varying in length depending on how high you want it to sit off the bottom. If you're fishing a six foot spot, guys, you don't want to have a four foot leader down here because your bait's going to hardly be under the surface. Uh, if you're fishing a deep 15, 20 plus foot hole, you can have that thing as far as four or five feet off the bottom and you're still going to be in the money zone. So you've got your 65 or 80 pound braid, do a three way swivel. You have your leader tied to a snap swivel on the bottom and off the other side of your swivel. You have another leader section with your 10 knot hookers terminal tackle hook or a 12 knot hook with a snell knot on there. That's also extremely important. Snell knots and loop knots for circles, guys. That's going to increase your hookup ratio tenfold. Pretty simple rig, nothing crazy. Uh, some things that you can play with on this rig is putting both a rattle or a float on this line. Uh, the float, as we mentioned before, that's going to help keep your line up and prevent your bait from resting. Uh, this rig in itself does a pretty good job of that. Uh, another rig you can run is just a simple inline rig. Uh, I don't have it set up because I personally don't run those, um, but all that would look like is a big egg sinker or even a pyramid sinker. You would run it straight through. Uh, yeah, I can show you. So that inline rig will look something like this. You're gonna have, this would be your main line right here. You're gonna take your main line and you're just gonna run it right through that sinker. That'll sit on bottom. You tie a big two-way swivel to the end of your main line. Uh, one of the things you want to keep in mind when you do buy your swivels for your sinkers, make sure that the head of your swivel can't fit through the loop on your sinker. Main line through your sinker, two-way swivel on the end, a section of leader line, and then your hook. Uh, what that'll actually allow to do is on the rig I just showed you, when that fish picks up your bait, it's actually going to be picking up the lead as well. On this rig, that won't happen. That line will actually just continue to feed through your sinker and they won't pick it up. Uh, one of the disadvantages to running this rig, uh, it is easier to have your bait rest and just sit on bottom because uh, there's really nothing keeping them up. Uh, other than that, you could solve that by running a float. Play with both rigs. Depends on where you fish, what you're trying to accomplish. Both of those rigs work. Uh, if you guys have any advice or something that you could do different, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Let the folks know. Give you guys a rundown on everything that we just talked about today. Find yourself a rod with a big range on that line rating. You're going to want a soft tip and a ton of backbone. Uh, you can save money on rods. That isn't something you have to spend a fortune on. This Shimano Sojourn for the money is an awesome stick. Uh, I'd recommend it in a medium heavy if you're going to be using it on circle hooks and flathead fishing. Reels. Don't save money on reels. That's gonna cost you money in the long run by trying to go the cheap route. Spend the money up front. There are other reels out there that I'm sure that perform as well as this one. However, I haven't found one yet. I will be running 10 squalls from this point forward. Awesome stick. I think that covers everything in this video. Soft rod, heavy braided line. Uh, oh, one thing I didn't mention guys, 60 pound mono leader. Uh, for the leaders we talked about. Uh, this is just trialing big game mono. It's nothing fancy, it's cheap. I think this whole spool is $10. Rod with a big range, soft tip, a lot of backbone. Uh, spend the money on the reels up front. And the most important thing, guys, hit the freaking water, try stuff, spend a lot of time out there. You'll have good days, you'll have bad days, uh, but just keep dropping baits. Let's get all you guys on some more whisker fish. Thanks for sticking around for Whisker Week. If you haven't watched those past videos, make sure you check them out. Tell your friends, tell everybody you know who's into catfishing. Let's make Whisker Week a thing. Uh, we're shooting to try and do this from this point forward. We're gonna do this between two and four times a year. Uh, who needs Shark Week when you got Whisker Week? See you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for what's next.